Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. Continuing our series on giving tips and guidance on using DxO's powerful masking tools, in this video, we're going to be giving four tips on using DxO's oldest and most universal masking tool, simply called the brush tool. So let's get right into it. Before we get on with the tips, let's first answer the question, what is the brush tool? The brush tool is a masking tool that lets you retouch parts of the image by simply painting using your mouse pointer, graphics tablet, or trackpad. Unlike the automatic masking tool, which we discussed in a previous video and is also a type of brush, the brush tool does not have edge detection and will not allow for precise masking. As with all other masking tools, you can access the brush tool from the local adjustments panel and clicking on the corresponding button. Now let's get on with the tips. The first tip is to use the correct settings. Unlike the automatic masking tool, which has just one size setting, the brush tool has four settings, size, feathering, flow, and opacity. The first setting, size, is pretty self-explanatory and basically allows you to increase or decrease the brush's size. The second setting, feathering, defines the hardness of the brush edge. You can see how the brush increasingly becomes softer as feathering is moved from zero to 50 and finally to 100%. Flow lets you define how much paint is applied with each brush stroke. As you can see here, brushing with a flow of 16% produces a thin layer of paint. Increasing the flow to 50% and then 100% respectively increases the thickness of the paint proportionally. Do note that the greater the thickness of the paint, the greater the amount of adjustment applied. Opacity lets you define the maximum level of transparency of the painted area. If you set the opacity at 100%, your adjustment will be applied at 100% and the area will be completely opaque. If you set the opacity at 50%, the brush will cap the setting at 50% and your local adjustments will be only 50% applied. As a general rule, for natural looking adjustments, set your brush with feathering high while keeping flow and opacity low. For my own adjustments in this video, I've set feathering at around 90%, flow at around 50%, and opacity at 50%. The second tip is to know when to use the brush. As the brush tool has no edge detection, do not use it when you need to precisely mask an object, as in this example. You won't get great results. Instead, use the brush tool for masking objects with blurry or poorly defined edges or when a well-fitting mask is not critical or necessary. Here is one such example. In this image, there isn't a clear transition between the dog's soft fur and the background. Using the automatic masking tool produces an unnatural result as the tool cannot detect the edges accurately and any errors are exacerbated by the hard transition between masked and unmasked areas. On the other hand, using the brush tool with the previously recommended settings produces a more realistic result even though the mask is not perfectly fitted onto the subject. Here is another example of using a brush to mask fur. Using a brush though is not limited to just fur or hair. You can also use a brush for balancing tones in landscapes, as I'm doing here. As you can see, it works pretty well. Another situation to use the brush tool is to perform HSL local adjustments. Compared to the control point, it is far easier to use and more intuitive. It is also the better tool to use compared to the automatic masking tool, which, as we discussed in the previous video, does not visually represent the underlying mask accurately. 
The third tip is to be aware of brush compatibility. Unlike the automatic masking tool, which works with just the erase tool, the brush tool can be used with both the erase tool and the gradient tool, as you can see here. It disappointingly does not work with the automatic masking tool, control point, nor the control line. This means that you cannot add to the mask from these tools using the brush tool. The fourth tip is to know some shortcut keys. As previously discussed, shortcut keys make the masking workflow faster and less painful. The shortcut keys previously discussed for the automatic masking tool are also applicable to the brush tool. These include adjusting the brush size by moving the scroll wheel while simultaneously holding down the control or command key, pressing the alt key to activate the erase tool, pressing M to toggle mask overlay visibility. Also, the brush tool has its own unique keys. This include pressing shift plus B to activate the brush tool and adjusting feathering by moving the control wheel while holding down the shift key. So there you have it, another set of masking tool tips. I hope you see that despite being the oldest and simplest masking tool, the brush is still a very essential tool and can do things other masking tools can't. Let me know if you have any other brush tool tips that I may have missed out. Put it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.